Hey guys, my name is Em and welcome back to the start of a brand new weekly reading vlog. So today is Monday the 11th of October and I'm really really excited for this reading vlog. I do have a lot on this week but I'm also hoping to just get through so many spooky books. I read four books last week which you will see in my last vlog and I am so so excited. I hope I can channel that energy and maybe even more this week. Who knows? So as I said today is Monday, it is currently almost 6pm. We are just about to go on our book club live show for the September book club pick which was people we meet on vacation and I'm very excited to chat with the girls about it but for right now I'm going to show you my TBR. I do kind of have an extensive TBR but also I don't know if I'm going to show you everything right now because I am doing a 24 hour readathon at the weekend, possibly a 48 hour readathon so I'm not going to show you my TBR for that. So yeah let's get into the TBR. So the first book on this TBR is The Diviners by Libba Bray. I feel like this has been on my TBR now for the past couple weeks and I need to finish this. Like I need to finish it. I just keep being held back because if I don't read it in like the morning time I'm too scared to read it at night but also I don't have that much time to read in the morning so like the nighttime is my time to read but I am on page 276 I feel like I will be able to just sit down and finish this possibly tomorrow we'll see how it goes I'm actually not really sure but I am determined to finish this this week I am really liking it we're definitely getting more into the story and I'm really enjoying meeting all the new characters and we're kind of like being introduced to these characters very slowly and realizing that they may all have powers which is really exciting and I really do highly recommend this book. Then the next book on this TBR is Survive the Night by Riley Sager, another one that has been on the last couple of TBRs, but I am determined to get to it this week. This is a thriller about this girl who gets into the car with this guy who's potentially a serial killer, and it's her journey seeing if she will survive the night. I'm very excited to read this. Again, I do feel like it will be very, very fast because it is a thriller, and I feel like thrillers are always quite fast to read, and it's not that long either. So yeah, those are the two books on this TBR. I also do really want to read Kingdom of the Curse which is arriving on Wednesday so maybe I can manage to finish both of these books by Wednesday? Maybe not. I don't know. So yeah, that is the TBR for this week. I do have an unboxing right now of an Owl Crate box, which I'm very excited to show you. Okay, so we have the box here and I'm very excited to open it. These are probably going to be more summery themed items because these are the summer boxes. So this is July's box and the theme is Potions and Poisons, which is very exciting. I do actually know the book that is going to be in here. Okay, so the first thing we have is this box that says Owl Crate Apothecary Bibliophiles Brew and I think that sounds amazing. Oh my god. Okay, wait. Is this like a TBR jar? I feel like this is a TBR jar because it says, let Owl Crate Apothecary decide your fictional fate. I don't know if you can see. I'm sorry, the lighting. It says, cures reader's block. Take one when experiencing literary indecisiveness. I actually love that. Okay, and then we have the pin, which is this like potion with a heart inside it. Can you guess what the book is? Oh my God. Okay, so this is like an ice pop maker. Yeah, you do. I actually love this because you can just like fill it with your water or your juice. I genuinely love that. I think it's a very unique item. That's what I'm saying about Owl Crate's items. Like they're items that you didn't even think you needed. It says Fenburn's Fatal Frozen Delicacies. Love that. And also I love that like random items in my daily life are going to be book inspired. Okay, so then we have like this hand sanitizer holder, which I think is so amazing. They also give you a bottle. It has like this little design on the front. Oh my gosh. So it's bubble bath, but it's like in this really cute kind of like oldie time bottle and it's like a bubble bath that says vial of dreams, high kith bubble elixir. I don't know what this is inspired by, but this is by Fiction and Bath Co. And I love that. Wait. Oh my gosh, they had one of these last year and I still use it and it's in enamel bookmark and it is like this cute little metallic bookmark. One of them says eat me and one of them says drink me and it's like if you can see like it's connected by a chain at the back. So one hangs out at one side of your book and the other goes to the bottom. I love that so much. Oh my gosh. So that's obviously Alice in Wonderland. And then we have one final item before the book and this appears to be some sort of like cloth I don't know I think it's either a tea towel or a tapestry <laughs> I don't know which um but it's really cute and it has like the names of the flowers on them I think that's stunning very cute very floral I love it okay and then we have the book 
oh I love the addition and it's this poison heart by Kaylin Barron so yeah that is my unboxing I love that I think I'm gonna go right now because I have my book club discussion in like 10 minutes and I need to clean my room beforehand um but yeah I'm really excited I loved those items I think they're really unique items and I can't wait to read the book as well I do actually have the paperback edition so I will be getting rid of one of them because I don't think it's gonna be like my favorite book or anything so we'll see but yeah that is it for this unboxing and I will get back to you later <laughs> Okay besties, so it is now 10.30 on Monday night. I've been reading with Sophia and Bisma for a couple hours now and I have read another 100 pages of The Diviners. I am now on page 372 and oh my god this book is getting very very scary, very spooky. At the start of the book, like though there were a couple chapters that were a bit scary, a bit spooky, a bit eerie, the majority of the book was just like vibes and 1920s New York and parties and things like that. I have to say I'm getting thoroughly spooked. I would like to read another 30 pages to get up to the 400 page mark because I feel like that would make it a lot easier to finish tomorrow because I really want to finish it tomorrow and I feel like that would make it easier. So I'm gonna try be brave and try to do that while I have the girls on FaceTime, you know, because they're gonna protect me. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this book. I will say that I am loving the fact that we're meeting new characters. I think this book, for me, I think if I didn't have such a connection to the characters, I probably wouldn't continue because it is so scary, not because of the plot, because the plot's amazing too. I love these characters. I am so invested in these characters. I can't wait until these characters like become a group of friends because right now, like some of them know each other. Like Evie knows Theta, Theta, is kind of falling for Memphis and like different things like that but they don't all know each other I can't wait and also Sam Lloyd I love him love Evie love the whole gang I'm really liking this book I think there's going to be some plot twists I think that the uncle is going to have a lot to do with it everybody's hiding secrets everybody probably like has special powers or something I don't know but I'm really enjoying it really creeped out but also like I might as well just keep going because I'm already creeped out so I think I'm gonna try to get to page 400 which is like another 30 pages and then I will put it down for the night and hopefully continue tomorrow because there's like less than 600 pages and for some reason like even though it's like very close to 600 it feels less because it's like in the 500s if that makes sense so yeah that is my plan i'm loving this book but also very scared i'm a grade a wimp when it comes to like scary books scary films anything so yeah that is all i have to say
Hi besties, okay so today is Wednesday, I haven't spoken to you since Monday I think and I actually do have a good few reading updates and updates in general to show you. So I have finished two books since I spoke to you last and received three books in the post so I'm going to show you all of these right now and then show you what I'm planning on reading right now. So first up I finished The Diviners by Libra Bray. I am so glad that I finally finished this book. It was kind of looming over me because it was such a long book but I just love this book so so much so I gave it a 5 out of 5 star. Yes it was very scary, yes it had a lot of spooky things and honestly I do think that this was one of the scariest books that I have ever read but I loved it so much. The characters amazing. We have now found out so many other characters have these powers and I thought the ending was spectacular so I have actually ordered the second one even though I said I wasn't going to buy any more books because I kind of need to read it and I would rather have the book in case I just randomly decide to read it even though it's like 650 pages I think the second one but I'm so excited I love this book I would highly recommend you pick it up it has the perfect New York vibe 1920s vibe Halloween vibe it was just really spooky and eerie and perfect for this season but like I just love the characters and for me when like the characters are amazing it doesn't matter how slow the plot is because I was reading reviews on Goodreads and a lot of people were complaining about like how slow the plot is and that a lot of sentences and pages were dragged out. I can see where they're coming from but as I was reading I didn't actually pick up on that because I was just so invested in what was happening and the characters and like the scene settings and everything like that so I would really recommend this book. The other book that I finished was Caroline the graphic novel. I actually gave this a 2 out of 5 star. It was very very weird. Caroline is a story that like kind of interests me but also kind of doesn't interest me but I wanted to read the graphic novel just for the funsies and because I thought it was going to be a really quick read. It wasn't a very quick read because it was like 200 pages and quite a lot of text on the pages. It was weird. It wasn't like spooky or anything but it was quite disturbing and like a lot of the images were just like really weird and I would kind of recommend it but also kind of not. I don't think it was the best art style or anything and I didn't feel any particular way about it or anything so I gave it a two star maybe 2.5 it wasn't that bad and then I got three books in the post yesterday which I didn't get to show you because I had an appointment yesterday and I didn't really get much time to vlog and I had such a bad headache but I'm going to show you the books now I also did get my amazing package from Tiny Own Creations on Etsy which I will link down below and I loved everything from it I did show me like unboxing it I just didn't talk through it because I was really tired but you did get to see those items amazing but yeah so I have three books to show you and I'm very excited because I'm planning on reading all three of these this month. So the first one is a graphic novel and it is Delicates by Brenna Thummer. This is a sequel to Sheets which I read last October and really really liked. I'm planning on rereading Sheets and then reading this because I feel like it would be just nice to read both of them and I have wanted this book for so long and I never could like justify spending money on a graphic novel because I read them so fast but I really like reading them and then the Kindle edition was only like a euro cheaper than the paperback so I just went with the paperback and I'm so excited that I finally have this. I can't wait to read it. I may possibly read this on Halloween night. I feel like that would be perhaps a good idea but this is about like a little ghost in like a laundromat and I don't know much else. <laughs> then the next book that I got and I'm thinking about reading it this weekend because we are hosting a 48 hour readathon this weekend and it is Thornhill by Pam Smy and I'm very excited to read this. So this is a thick book. It is stunning. It's the hardcover edition and like just look at this. It is a mix between a graphic novel and a regular book. Like it has some text but the majority of the pages are like graphic novels and it's very very thick so I definitely think I'm gonna need like a 24 hour period to get through it but I'm very excited and then next up is the book that I wasn't sure if I was gonna get and then I decided to get and Anyways, Kingdom of the Cursed by Kerry Maniscalco. I think I'm going to start this either tonight or tomorrow with Sophia and I'm very excited because we read Kingdom of the Wicked together this month. We really liked it apart from the ending so I'm very excited to read this because this is new adult whereas the first one was young adult and I feel like that level of like maturity was what was missing in the first one so I'm very excited about this. However, my edition doesn't have the map that I keep seeing pictures of everywhere so quite disappointed about that but also I do have the fairy loot edition pre-ordered which will be coming in like December so I might either give away this book or maybe just have two copies. I kind of want to annotate this and I don't obviously want to annotate the special edition because 
I don't know I'm just always afraid to annotate special editions but yeah those are the books so this morning as I was doing some uploading and editing and things like that I was listening to an audiobook and the audiobook I was listening to was Horror Store by Grady Hendrix I have like about an hour left on the audio so I do think I will finish it while I'm doing some bullet journaling or something like that but I'm kind of liking it kind of not it's kind of like set in like an Ikea-esque shop and there's a lot of supernatural kind of weird things going on and someone keeps breaking into the store so the bosses make all of these staff stay overnight in the store to see what's happening and it's very spooky very creepy and I have like an hour left and I'm liking it but nothing special I think it's gonna be like maybe a three star I don't know maybe it's just because it's on audio and I just want to get through it really fast but I will get back to you more when I finish it and then I think I may start Survive the Night by Riley Sager I keep mentioning this book and keep not wanting to pick it up because for some reason I'm just not in like a thriller mood but I also really want to read this because I know I'm gonna like it so I might start a chapter now it's currently 2 p.m I have two hours until I go in to visit my nana and I'm thinking about maybe reading some of this beforehand because I feel like that would be nice see how it is see how fast it is and maybe I can finish it tonight that's a bit ambitious but maybe I can finish it tonight and then I can start Kingdom of the Cursed tomorrow but we're gonna see how it goes and yeah I'm gonna stop talking right now and get back to you later okay so I started Survive the Night and I'm 25 pages in already I have some thoughts so she's just gotten into the car with the stranger from like the rideshare board or whatever you know when like a thriller book desperately tries to make you believe that this person is guilty like they will show you every single sign and red flag that this person is guilty but like because you know that it can be that obvious you know that they're not guilty that is what's happening right now like our main character's friend has been murdered by this random person on campus they don't know who it is they have not been caught and she decides to get in the car with a stranger from that school but also she has no proof that he is from that school. And in the first like 20 pages, she's just gotten in the car. He won't let her see the inside of like the, the boot of the car, the trunk. Um, he will not let her see there. He stood to an angle so that it would be blocked off. He was wearing the exact same clothes as when she saw him first a few days ago. And also she said that his car looks like he just came back from getting it fully serviced and cleaned and hoovered and everything. So like, does that not sound like a crime scene? It does. So why is she still in the car? I just, I can't deal with stupidity in books with a main character when they just overlook every single sketchy thing that's happening. She's just like, yeah, it's fine, you know, it's good. So I'll keep reading, um, but if I'm not feeling it, I think I'm gonna put it down for a while. So I have now read up to page 70 in Survive the Night, which is like into the second hour. The book started at 9 p.m. and now we're at 10 p.m. So I think my goal for today, unless I like somehow get some random energy tonight and decide to read the whole thing, is just to get up to 11 p.m., which is like another 70 pages, which I think would be quite productive, would be quite an achievement. I will say that it's like a very fast read, a very easy read, which is what I was looking for, what I kind of expected, but I don't know if it's going to be amazing just yet. Riley Sager has this thing that he puts in his books and I've only read one of his books so maybe I'm wrong, maybe it just happens to be the two that I picked up, but basically the trope is that the main character doesn't remember what happened on the night of the incident of the book you know what I mean like something is preventing them from remembering what happened and if they remembered what happened the whole crime would be fixed and solved which is quite a frustrating like plot point because you have no explanation for why things are the way they are except for the fact that the main character doesn't want to remember them or can't remember them and then in the very end just as the killer is about to strike or something then they remember them which for me just doesn't really do much for me because like I would rather like some sort of betrayal happen um rather than just like oh I don't want to remember because it's too scarring which I understand happens with PTSD but I don't think it's a good enough trope in a thriller but yeah I'm gonna go right now and then I will come back to you later if I read anymore. Hello besties! Okay, so it is currently Thursday evening about 6pm. So this morning I had a dentist appointment which is never pleasant, like it was quite hard and up until like about an hour ago I couldn't open my jaw. So this is kind of the first that I'm speaking 
today because I literally couldn't speak. So yeah, I wanted to give you a reading update because I did read some more last night of Survive the Night. I read a little bit more, um, but I was starting to get like really tired. Like it's not scary, but also when you're reading about like a potential serial killer at like one in the morning, it's never a good idea, you know what I mean? So I got up to page 112. It's a good book, it's okay. I think it definitely did pick up at the start. I was just thinking like, oh my God, this main character is so dumb, I hate when the main character is like obviously overlooking major major red flags but in like a situation um but things have improved i'm actually really liking the direction that the book is going in however there's a lot of uncertainty over what is real and what is not real i'm not going to say too much but like for 30 pages or so we were reading about this really intense situation that was happening in the car and then we kind of find out that maybe that situation has not happened but maybe it's all going on in our main character's mind which is quite twisty and i did mention before that i don't love how riley sager kind of relies on memory loss to make plot twists and I feel like he does that in both of the books that I've read by him. I don't know about the other ones. I don't necessarily know how I feel about that. I feel like for a trope or for a plot twist it, there needs to be an actual like plot twist. It's not just like oh I remembered it differently. You know what I mean? Like I don't know why but sometimes that pisses me off. It is a very fast read. I do want to read something right now. I'm not sure if I want to read this or start another book because I am doing a 48 hour readathon this weekend and I feel like this would be the perfect book for it because it is such a fast read. I am also considering picking up Kingdom of the Cursed. I am really in the mood to read this and I said to myself yesterday that I would read this book after I went to the dentist as like a little self care thing but I have such a bad like headache and jaw ache and just like face ache that I don't know if I'm in the headspace to read a fantasy but also there's like no difference from scrolling through TikTok and this. But these are the two books that I'm reading and I'm loving and I cannot wait to finish them both even though I've not even started this one but you know what I mean. Today after the dentist um, it's right beside a very small bookshop so I went in there we only had like five minutes um, before we had to go and I was feeling quite like dizzy and nauseous so we didn't stay too long but my mom did buy me one book because that's kind of like been a tradition of ours since I went to to the dentist like for the first time when I was like I don't know seven I don't know what age you go to the dentist but she got me this book it's called Hidden it's about survivors of the holocaust but I believe that these are children's stories and I feel like this is going to be just very very hard hitting and usually in the winter months I do read a lot more historical fiction I'm hoping to get back into reading historical fictions because we're studying the holocaust and world war ii in history class right now and my teacher has said it would help to like watch the movies and read books about the holocaust and that is what i am doing so it's educational but yeah i'm gonna stop talking right now and i'm going to go possibly read hope you're having an amazing week hello besties so it is friday today it is currently 2 42 in the afternoon you can see misty behind me i just wanted to come on to say i will be ending this vlog today um i do have like a couple more things to say but i will be ending it today because me and the girls are doing a fun spooky 48 hour readathon starting tonight and going until sunday night so that is why i'll be ending this vlog but first of all i wanted to read a little bit more and update you a little bit more because i feel like in the second half of the week I just had so much going on and so many appointments and so much schoolwork that I didn't actually get to read anything so I just want to give you a quick reading update before the readathon and yeah so first of all I got a book in the post today and it is Lair of Dreams by Libba Bray which is the second diviner book and I'm really excited to read this I may get to it maybe next week I do have another very very big TBR for next week and next week is actually my last kind of spooky week because my cousin is coming over next weekend and we're gonna spend then um, the following week together so I'm not gonna be reading anything so anything I want to do in October kind of has to be done next week so let me tell you my reading updates yesterday I did kind of start Kingdom of the Curse by Carrie Minascalco because I had gotten home from my dentist appointment and I was like you know what I need some self-care I need some wrath in my life and I didn't get to read that much because me and my mom ended up watching some Fear Street instead which is amazing we have one movie left and we're probably gonna watch that tonight but I did get up to page 22 I am liking it already I have some things Theories over what I think is going to happen but I'm really really enjoying it and I am hoping to read a little bit today but again I don't necessarily know if this is going to be on my readathon TBR so anything I read today I probably won't finish it this weekend but I will read as much as I can and then maybe finish it like Monday or Tuesday next week um, but yeah we'll see I'm really enjoying this book and I cannot wait to see how it ends up so actually my main goal for right now and for today is to read some more of Survive the Night by Riley Sager I'm actually planning on finishing this during the 48 hour readathon because I feel like with a thriller 
it's a very very fast read and I should be able to get through it. I'm currently on page 112 and I want to get up to page 200 before the readathon. So yeah that is my plan for the rest of the day. I will update you maybe one more time just to give you a final wrap up before I end the vlog but I'm very excited. So right now I'm going to finish my work that I have to do and then I'm going to move on to survive the night and hopefully read another little bit before this evening. So yeah I'm really excited and I will get back to you later.